Okay, so so when so when we talk about you know you, you're you're sewing your own pants and you're and, and then you figure how did you figure out that there was a market there? How did you figure out that there was something that you that you could be passionate about? Yeah. And 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 how did that start? Well, so uh, here's what happened. I I finally got some. I got like super serious about doing this my second year at business school. And part of the risk was just starting to spend money to actually make a product and kind of figuring out how to do that. It's pretty daunting. I mean, it doesn't seem, it's hard to remember just how daunting it was at the time. But, um, you know, I probably spent $50,000 across the pattern making and the grading and buying fabric and buying zippers and making labels and doing all these things just to kind of get going. And I sold the first 500 pairs of pants out of the trunk of my car and, you know, shipping them to friends. And I think, I think when, what I like to say is I knew I had something when people I didn't know were buying another pair, right? When they were like repeat customers who, you know, it's like, if your mom buys something, you know, <laughs> you're, you're probably not sure you have product market fit, but mm -hmm. um, establishing that product market fit um, pretty quickly, I think gave me the courage to invest more of my own capital. And I also think it, it influenced Andy, my business partner to, to get involved. Right. I think he had to kind of see it and then he saw it happening and thought, you know, there's something there. And, um, you know, even after I started the business, I sometimes like to joke, you know, uh, how important Andy was to the story. I often will joke, like, if it weren't for Andy, I probably would still be selling 10 pairs of pants a day out of the trunk of my car. And I'd probably have like a serious finance job during the week and I'd do it as a hobby and I'd still be doing mm -hmm. it. So, you know, at some point you got to go out and kind of swing for the fences a little bit. And for us, that meant raising some outside capital and, and really trying to build a company not just have it be like a hobby. And what, what were the strengths that, that you saw in Andy and then he saw in you? And, and how, did you got, how, was, how did your strengths differentiate to create you know, you know, the, the structure of the business to begin with that became successful? Yeah, I mean, the truth is much, much has been said and written over the years about our partnership not working that well. And so, mm -hmm. um, including a case at Stanford Business School that we both go back and participate in where they talk about, you know, why this founder founder partnership ended in divorce. I think what I would tell you is both of us had a lot to learn about actually running a company and building a business. And we made a lot of mistakes. Um, I would say the things that were really positive were we were both pretty courageous guys that were willing to take a lot of risk and, and, take the leap of trying to go build a brand from scratch. And neither one of us really had that much relevant experience, which I ultimately think might've been helpful. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, first and foremost, I think to be an entrepreneur, you just have to be willing to take that risk. You have to be willing to put yourself out there to start something, to hold yourself accountable. And, you know, it's very, very different than punching the clock at someone else's, someone else's company. And I think, mm -hmm. I think Andy, was a very courageous classmate of mine who really influenced me to be more bold and brave myself. Um, I also think it's really helpful when you have some friends around you that say, Hey, this is a good idea. Like you should go do this. And ideally there are people who are customers. So, you know, if you, um, I, I've often, I've often sort of daydreamed about becoming a general contractor because I love real estate and I like building things. And, um, you know, I, I've, I, like part of me thinks, well, I should just go build a house and sell it and see how it feels and then figure out if I want to do 50 more of them, you know? And it's like, how do you right. get the courage to take that risk? Right. How do, like, what, what makes you buy your first property and, and hire an architect and, and, buy all these materials and start building and know that you might lose some money. Like what, how do you get that courage? And I think, I think people find it in different places. Um, and I think for me, it was largely around just really having this dream of making a brand that I thought was cool and sort of filled a hole in the market. And so largely it was driven by not seeing that market demand being met and also delighting in seeing customers that were really excited about it.